In this lesson, we'll discuss the process of writing your first script. When creating your script, make sure to take into account that any incorrect or sloppy formatted script makes a terrible first impression. And writers don't always get a chance for a second one, especially in the game industry. Here you can see a script with the most of the major elements. For me, the most important ones are the heading or slug line, the action or scene description, and the dialogue section. Every scene gets its own scene heading, usually a slug line. This is basically what it sounds like. Whether we're indoors or outdoors, the we in this case actually means the camera. Here are some examples in action. Note that the examples include int because the scene takes place inside a house. Whether a shot is interior or exterior depends on where the camera is. For instance, say we saw the bushes and front door from the house. The slug line would say exterior and probably front porch instead of living room. Next comes the location and applicable sublocations indicated with a dash. For instance, here we have a house and we're located in Bob's bedroom, or we're in San Francisco on Lombard Street, or we're in the car, but we're actually in the back seat. Next, we want to discuss the time or passage of time. This is the final element, which gives either the time or day or indication of how much time has passed between scenes. This is important for the programmers on your team as well as the lighting artists because both lighting the scene and it keeps the flow and continuity as the story moves along. Usually this information will appear simply as day or night. This is crucial information that lets the game lighting artists know and the team overall that you'll need to light the scene during the day or they'll need to light the scene at night. Most games have an action element and actually the highest grossing ones have some sort of action or mystery element. So remember that your script is everyone's blueprint. So every time a slug line indicates a location and time, you have to also describe exactly what we see, especially the people in the scene. List every named character we see and anyone who plays any part in the action, including extras. This is like waiters, sports fans, cops, whatever air character or non-playable characters in the scene. Even if they never speak or a character makes a sound other than speech, sneezing, coughing, laughing, groaning, signing, humming, put that in the scene description. Also note that speech is different from sound. You can write spoken words or summarize or descriptions of dialogue in your scene's descriptions. Next we'll discuss camera direction and special shots. Generally, the programmer will set up cameras in the scene based on your script or where the game designer laid out the game design doc. But overall, generally the script writer doesn't handle all of the camera directions. It's sort of uh, set up by the team. So for example, like the specifics of tilting, panning, zooming in, anything that would actually involve touching the camera. So it's best to write in like camera directions rather than like the rotation or angle of a camera, only when absolutely necessary. Or you can also write in things that might help with a cinematic. So say you wanna switch the perspective of the camera onto a small child whose eye line is at knee level. You can indicate these shots as POV and then small child. Similar to before, transitions can be used to cut to, dissolve to, smash, or add extra features to the shot. But overall, these are generally handled by committee because the programmer will sort of enter the code that will switch between the cinematics. Now there's actually cinematic artists or animators that will read from your script within the game and they'll sort of take into account the way you set this up. So overall, in many scripts, you'll see indications of how the writer wants the scene to transition to the next, and that's you. So you can kind of help them along by giving them an idea of what you think by using these. And they're not always necessary, especially when the transition is like a simple cut between different scenes or game levels. Um, that's considered a default transition. So many script writers don't bother with using it every scene. But here's a description of how these work. So there's cut to, which is only used when it's completely necessary and essential to your plot or story to cut from one scene to the next at this particular moment. Then there's dissolve to, which is used to show the passage of time, memories, or flash forwards, also used to create a sentimental or nostalgic or sad effect. Then you have something called a smash cut, which is an aggressive, fast cut, used often to show a change in emotion or something blown up or for comedic effect. Now these are, you'll see these a lot in games, um, but it's, it's not necessarily recommended to use this transition often, as again, it's one of those things that will be worked out during the final game development process. And then there's fade in, which is usually at the start of a script or scene. And then there's fade out, which is usually at the end or of a level or scene. Then we have dialogue. 
Um, this column is indented on both sides of the passage. It's basically centered with a few tweaks. The character name is always at the close center at the top, and the name of the character is always um, the name of the character that is speaking is always capitalized. Next, we have parentheticals. These are used when it's absolutely necessary to direct the actor to deliver the line in a specific way. That would not be obvious. Um, otherwise, performing a gesture or action while speaking the line, or address the different characters within the dialogue block. So generally, you'll work with sort of the audio engineer, audio designer on your team. Um, sometimes the director will be in there, and they'll say things like, okay, you're going to read this line under your breath, or whispering, or angry. 